Being someone who's disabled too, I never want to make someone feel that way. This reminds me of something I can't quite put my finger on. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. In this video, we're going to do a little story time about the time I was working with kids because that in itself is a story time and a story time and a story time. I hope you guys enjoy this one. If you do, hit the like and let's get into it. Eight years ago? I think it's nine years ago now, wow. I worked at a middle school as a nutrition coordinator and basically what I did is for this after school program, I would go in the kitchen with five, sometimes even just two kids, and we would learn to cook the meal of the evening. Now when I was initially hired, I thought after school program, after school snacks. Oh, was I wrong. The site coordinator, which is basically the supervisor that looks over the nutrition coordinator, the program coordinator, and the homework coordinator, she was different. Very big heart, all the kids loved her, but she was different. This particular site coordinator told me that I had to make a full meal. Mind you, the budget was 80 cents a child. How do you make a full meal with three to four food groups, 80 cents a child? By the end of it, I got the swing of it, but I can't even lie, the first couple months, I was using my Chibo checks, so when I was working at the restaurant, to pay for the food for the kids program. So I was basically paying to work there, which is gonna lead into the story at the end of why I left. I was confused because when I was initially hired, the manager of the program, because there's like 22 different schools that are involved in this, told me it would be an after school snack. So I said, how do we get from snack to a dinner? At the end of my nearly two years of working there, they switched up some of the routine of how the program ran. So initially it was supposed to be an after school snack. My site coordinator said a whole meal. Okay, there's that. But by the end of my two years, the manager told all 22 sites that they should have a little snack prepared. So as soon as the bell rings and the kids come into the program, they have something to snack on as they do their homework or they go off to play games or do exercise or whatever. Here goes me making a whole meal, a snack, and I would also most often bake dessert with them too. I love baking and I wanted the kids to kind of learn the love of baking with me. And I figured out of everything, it's the safest thing they can do. Because one thing I gotta say, working in middle school, teaching kids how to cook, them knives, any, actually take the knives out. Everything is a hazard in the kitchen. So having three to five kids at any given moment work around a hot stove, big tub sinks, of course the knives and anything else they can cut themselves with. It was just, I don't know how I got through it. But I did it and once I got the swing of it, I actually got to keep my checks instead of spending it on the kids' food. <laughs> So one of the stories that I wanted to share with you guys, because I feel like that was a whole story time intro, is one time I came in and these kids were very fast, okay? They knew way too much. One day the kid came in and he's like, Miss, what's an abortion? I said, no, I am not the one. This middle school is weird because my middle school was grade seven to grade nine. Theirs was grade six to grade eight. So I felt like the grade sixes were too young and the grade eight should have but that's just me. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is these kids knew more than they should have known, but I figured that goes for any kids these days since social media puts them on one and not in the good way. So when he asked me that, I said, I'm not the one to play with. Where'd you get that word from? He said, oh, one of my friends earlier today said that my mom should have had one. I said, well, all I'm going to say is that's not true. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'm sure you know what Google is and you probably found it on your own. I'm not going to be the one. He knew that I knew that he just wanted me to say it. And I'm not going to be the one to educate you on something you have no business knowing. So there was another time when this girl, I felt so bad for her. She was a little socially awkward. And the girls there were so mean. It reminded me of when I was in school because I was both the bully and the bully that bullied bullied you know what i'm trying to say and either side you don't want to be you don't feel good so it broke my heart because she say miss they always called me miss i'm like my name's alicia just call me alicia no one likes me and they say i'm kind of annoying and i talk too much and i know i do because my mom says it too and i felt so bad because i've been there too and she did talk a lot don't get me wrong homegirl talked a lot like brrr, like a motor that would not stop so i could see where they got it from but they took it to the next level and unfortunately again with the social media and this era and this age there was no break like i remember being bullied back in the day 
at least when the bell rang until the next bell rang the next day, I got a break. These kids go on social media and they're crying to me about how everyone purposely wasn't liking their particular picture on Instagram or when they're on Facebook, people were commenting mean things below and they're reading this at seven o'clock. Like clock out, your shift at school is done. Give it a break. I felt so bad for them and I'd always tell them, I know it's hard, I'm on social too. No, you cannot have my social, but I will tell you that I have to regimen my time. And if I can at my big old age, so can you. They were listening. The girl that was bullying her was your typical mean girl. Really long, beautiful hair. She was dating and I'm like, dating who for what? You're in seventh grade, go do your homework. She had like a whole minion of girls that she was mean to, but they would still flock to her. And she would pick on this particular girl and I just, I try to give my words of wisdom. Eventually one day she came to me, she's like, thank you so much. It really helped. I don't feel so bad about myself. Sometimes that's all you can do. Third story for today before we wrap up is the one that touches my heart the most. Well, there's actually two. We'll do two more stories. One of the touching stories, I don't remember his name. He had autism and he was very high functioning. And I remember one day he's like, miss, why don't you treat me the way you do with everyone? And I'm like, what do you mean I do? And he's like, no, no, sometimes you say things in a different way. He first, let me rewind. First he thanked me for letting him use knives and stuff because he said the old people before me didn't let him use anything. And I said, no, I trust you. And I'm also watching you the same way I watch everyone else. But he said the tone and the way I talked to him was different and that really broke my heart. Being someone who's disabled too, I never want to make someone feel that way. I said, okay, if that's how you feel, I'm gonna talk to you the same way I talk to everyone else. And from that day on, I think you regretted it. It wasn't that I was coddling him, but I definitely let him get away with more than the other kids because I had a soft spot for him. If you've ever worked with an autistic child or you're autistic yourself or have an autistic family member, you know sometimes they can say things out of pocket. Oh, I have dreams of stabbing everyone. And I'm looking at him cutting the onions, like, should I take that knife away? Hmm. He's just saying it to say it because I think they're looking for shock factor. After that day though, whenever he'd say anything crazy like that, I would cut him off real quick and he's like, I'm like, yeah, you, you wanted me to treat you like anyone else. Any other kids that said that, I, I'd catch him real quick. So you played yourself. This last story involves a troublesome kid and a teacher. So some of the teachers would cut through the kitchen because it was a shortcut to the parking lot. I always hate it when they did that because it would disrupt the kids and it was already hard enough to get that age group to focus and not hurt themselves and cook a meal safely. Cooking meat while visually impaired, I wasn't as blind as I am today, thank God. I don't think I, don't think I would risk it nowadays. I mean, I make my meals okay here, but I'm feeding for one and maybe two sometimes, but feeding 20 to 30 kids and I can't see, I mean, Sometimes things were well done or under seasoned, but that's how it goes. I remember one day this teacher came through and we'd chat back and forth a lot because he'd come almost every single day through there on his way out. And he's just like, you're really good with so-and-so. Oh yeah, he's good with me. It's actually really problematic. Like all the other teachers complain about him. He's failing every subject. We don't know what he's gonna do. I don't think he's eating at home. And I'm like, most of these kids aren't eating at home. That's why they're in this program. And that's why I feel so compelled to give them a whole meal. I just kind of kept that in the back of my mind. As luck would have it a couple days later, the kid comes up to me and he's like, miss, I like you. And I'm like, oh shit. Cause you know, they're that age group. And I'm just like, ah. I worked with other kids in the past and I'm like, I hate navigating like the crush situation. Like, it's just so awkward to tell them that, yo, you're gonna have feelings, but not towards me because that's highly inappropriate, okay? Lee, this time it wasn't that type. He just said, you know, I like that you respect me is how he continued it. And I'm like, oh, I respect where respect is given. And he's like, yeah, all these other teachers don't respect me. The way they look at me, it's just like, I'm just, nothing, I'm useless, I'm worthless, so I kind of just act that way. And I remember thinking back to when I was in school, because I had the same experiences too, where I was put in a different part of the class because the teacher didn't want to deal with me and I was labeled ADHD, very well might be, but the way I was treated definitely impacted my lack of interest in certain subjects. And I hate that teachers hold so much power and just because they don't like a kid or find the kid too problematic or too troublesome, they just label them this way and maybe they go through the whole school system living out that label. So I told him, I'm like, hey, respect is not always given, but you are a representative for yourself. So I know some of these teachers are gonna try you, but don't take what they say personally because they don't know you, you know you. And it's so crazy because by the end of the year, I won't say he was an A plus student, but his grades did improve. So I was like, okay, 
my voice has range i was so happy to hear that i wonder how all these kids are doing nowadays they're probably grown grown because again this is like what almost a decade ago but that last story really touched me a lot of times when you work with these troubled youth they're just discarded they're just labeled and it's one and done but if you actually take the time to get to know someone and they're literally little someones so realize there's always a backstory it's not that the kid was stupid or lazy or anything like that it's he didn't feel inspired to learn because the teachers didn't care to instill the same attention they did to everyone else and i would feel i felt that before so i know how he felt let's call this part one if you want a part two let a girl know because i've worked with racist kids unruly parents just anything you can imagine like i've seen it and it's just like i could never be a teacher i have a different level of respect for anyone that works with a child because let's say cumulatively i worked with kids for about five to six years of my life and i want those years back <laughs> I bet you didn't think I was gonna say that. But no, I loved working with kids because they really keep you young and they really try you sometimes. Wrap it up here before I ramble on to another story. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, you know what to do. Tap the like, subscribe, and share too. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.